Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so, I hope what I'm about to present is going to be interesting enough for those who have been carbo-loading during lunch, so you're not too sleepy to hear about more stories about Omnichannel. Uh, may I know, show hands, who are retailers in this room? Retailers, retailers. So I think uh, you've been bombarded with a lot of information today about what Omnichannel is about and how important it is about uh, uh, omni being in an Omnichannel presence and everything. But um, I'm not going to be here to tell you about what's the perfect formula to be in Omnichannel. But uh, I'm going to tell you what are the things to consider when you are building your Omnichannel. Okay, so here's what I'm going to cover this afternoon. I'm going to tell you a brief introduction about what RupaRupa.com is. Uh, the Omnichannel snapshot currently in Indonesia. Things to consider when you build your Omnichannel. Uh, Rupa Rupa, the challenges that we face when we build it. And uh, finally, what is the approach that we adopted? So RupaRupa.com, we just launched last year, which is in May 2016. And uh, we are, our vision is to be the number one omnichannel uh, e-commerce for home, living, and furniture in Indonesia. Uh, we are currently the exclusive online retailer for Kawan Lama Retail Group, which includes Ace, Informa, Toys Kingdom, those are the familiar names that you may have heard. And uh, if you see any of our products actually being sold online in any other marketplaces right now, uh, they're probably not supplied by us. <laughs> yeah, mungkin uh, stock lari kali ya, if somebody comes to an order and then they just ordered from our store or uh, lining up in our cashier. So we are also back, uh, we are part of Kawan Lama Group, uh, which you might have heard that we have a 60 plus years in trading and retail. Okay. So here are the products that we carry. Uh, currently we have about 20,000 products listed on our site. Um, uh, it encompasses from automotive, home improvement, uh, lifestyle, lifestyle categories like sports, health, uh, toys, uh, hobbies, and of course, uh, our backbone, which is the home furnishings and decor. So if you were to go to our site also, uh, you will notice that we categorize our products, our products in terms of uh, lifestyle categories, and also we try to present, um, we try to present our products in an inspirations uh, kind of style. So uh, let's say we will have a cleaning inspiration, and what about uh, this coming Chinese New Year, we will have a, pro um, a special section about products that will be needed during, uh, what, uh, during Chinese New Year. So here's uh, a data that uh, I got from Nielsen, actually, uh, last year data. And their survey says that uh, Indonesians are mostly omnichannel shoppers, 56% uh, to be exact. So they browse online, they browse offline as well, they also purchase offline and also purchase online. As you can see, the only people who are um, exclusively online are even less than uh, a single digit. It's only 6% and even 5%. So uh, we are still, uh, Indonesians are still a very, very um, touch and feel uh, kind of society. We trust the brands that we see uh, that have a physical presence. So if you're a retailer, these are very good news. So let's dwell into why customers shop omnichannel. So here are the problems that uh, we have actually surveyed before. People want to, especially true in Jakarta, yeah? uh, you don't want to be stuck in traffic to go to a certain store that you look for and then knowing that the product is not there. So you'd rather go to a store that you know for sure that carry the product that you want. And then a lot of people also uh, find information on what the product is about. So they're going to search online, okay, is this air cooler, is uh, this AC specifications, is it 
uh, relevant to what I need. Is this bike is exactly the same specification as my friend has? And then, of course, the decision, some of the product decision is not on impulse. So they come on several trips uh, to get, uh, to finally make a purchase. Like, for example, furniture. You will go to a store first. Uh, actually, you might actually um, look online first. Which retailers have, um, have the black sofa that you're looking for? And then you go to that store, right? And then during that store, you might also want to see at another retailer uh, another black sofa that might uh, appeal to you more. And then you go home, and then you wanted to see if that black sofa from which a retailer A or B will fit more in your living room. So that's where omni uh, omnichannel presence is very important. And then this happens a lot, which I personally don't like, which is a slow store service. It, I find it um, uh, a bad customer experience if I go to a store and there's a, like a long queue. And then sometimes the cashier, oh yeah, the barcode is not being scanned. Oh yeah, the credit card sw uh, doesn't swipe right. And, uh, and the list so on and so on. And I'm sure you have experienced any of those in the store. And the list goes on. We love, as customers, we love uh, options and flexibility. There's online deals. You know, I think uh, every Indonesian, if not everybody, love to go uh, online to find deals and also offline. And then there's free shipping also. And then, of course, uh, I think trusting the brand that I shopped before or seen before. I think that is the main uh, thing that put retailers on a positive note uh, more than other uh, e-commerces that have no physical presence. So what I, was, I want to say to sum this up is know what exactly your customers want, how they behave, what their customer experience is that they're going to look for, and address their pain points. Okay, so this is the question that uh, I think a lot of retailers ask themselves uh, when they want to build their uh, online uh, presence. Uh, to put it this way, uh, being a retailer, you want to, anytime you make a decision, it's about whether you want to build in a mall or a standalone store, right? If you have a, uh, in a mall, that means you already... Um, use the traffic that's already there. But of course, the rent is going to be expensive and da 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 And then of course, standalone store, uh, you can have more control over where it is. So it's pretty much the same as building your own. Uh, if you want to join an already existing marketplace or having building your own e-channel. Either is, a, is an, it's not an either or alternative. So you can choose both, actually. So it really depends on how um, ready your organization is and also uh, how much resources that you want to put in. And we and Kawan Lama, we already uh, addressed this when we started as ruparupa.com. So here are the things that to consider, okay? First is, uh, I mentioned earlier about the company's willingness to invest. Uh, building a new sales channel is really, really not easy. So you really need the company's resources, how much they actually want to put in, how serious they are, how uh, much the corporate backing that you're going to put into this new, uh, very niche business. Especially, I can tell you in Kawan Lama, uh, digital ventures is still very new because we have a long history of physical presence. So going online is like something, oh what, there's no store, there's no, uh, uh, there's no products that's being displayed. There's a lot of um, things that we need to answer to that. Okay, so, and then next, nature of product. So if you're selling products like uh, um, furniture, you need to know what's the customer, uh, what, how the customer purchased the products, right? Uh, they're going to go back and forth uh, to finally make a decision. 
it's not like if you're selling a candy where you can just buy on an impulse. So those are the things. Uh, what you sell determines the product features on your site. If you have a high ticket item, so it might be useful to provide an easy return assurances, installment services uh, to make sure that customers are more willing to spend online uh, rather than if it's on impulse or something is a product that everybody can find in any other place, you might want to go on a price um, differentiation, meaning you provide the, the cheapest or any other incentives. The pricing strategy. If you have an offline presence and then you have an online presence as well, how are you going to decide whether which one is cheaper or which one is going to be more expensive or is it going to be the same price? So those are the things that you need uh, to consider as well. What if there's a price discrepancy? If uh, the product today, the same exact product, is being priced differently at your different channels. So those are the things that you need to consider, uh, especially to your customer service when should the question arises, if a customer asks, oh, why do I see uh, the price is more expensive online or, I mean, the, more, the price is more expensive online, offline, what are you going to do about it? Market competitiveness. Uh, have your competitors gone uh, omni-channels? I think that's also a question that you might want to ask. Uh, if not, if yes, like what kind of services are they offering? It's, um, of course, being online is uh, making your brand more visible to uh, other competitors as well. So you kind of uh, need to know where, uh, what's your brand positioning is going to be. And finally, I think I want to stress this as well, your internal team readiness. You will be breaking down walls in terms of business processes when you're going omni-channel. Uh, are the rules of your KPIs um, aligned between a physical store and, on, uh, and your online stores? If they go uh, return and refunds, uh, can your operations uh, team on the sales floor accept returns and refunds from your online? I think those are the things that um, ensure the customer uh, satisfaction because in the end, why you want to go on, uh, on an omni-channel strategy is to make sure that your customer is satisfied, they stick with your brand, they're more loyal to the brand because they get the same experience offline and online. Okay. So here are our challenges. Uh, here are the things that we have to put uh, a lot of thoughts on while we're building RupaRupa.com. Uh, we have 180,000 plus of combined SKUs. And instead of combining just one, let's say you have a single brand, you're a retailer of a one single brand and you want to go online. I think that's a lot simpler than what we had uh, earlier where we have, we have to combine seven different companies under the group uh, as we go online. And that means it's a network of 200 plus physical stores and 200 store managers, I don't know how many thousands of um, customer service uh, that is on the floor. And plus to that, uh, we are not going to offer just but, uh, Kawan Lama products, but also on marketplace as kit use. So uh, it kind of changed the business process that we have where we only sell our products, uh, where our DC only processes products that uh, is from our own BU, but also how we treat products that's coming from outside our business unit. The next challenges will be, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we have been in this business for a very long time. That means we also have a different legacy systems. We have a lot of different, uh, uh, I don't know, how do you call it? Uh, infrastructures that handles our business processes. We also have uh, SAP running in the background, and we also have different WMS, uh, warehouse management systems that we use. Uh, and building, putting all that to work at ruparupa.com has been proved to be a challenge. And uh, in the retail side, we are 25 years of retail business processes and business practice. Uh, it can be a blessing or a curse. 
it can be a blessing because we know what the best practices are. So we know what's best to know, but that is coming from a physical store. So how do you break down these uh, cemented ideology, uh, every business processes that's being already carved in stone and change it into an omni-channel serving company? Okay. And we also have a reputation of our, of course, our sister companies being the number one home improvement and lifestyle brand. And it's, um, that's why we carefully crafted our customer experience uh, since the beginning because we don't want customers who are already uh, have the mindset that, oh yeah, Ace is the helpful place, Informa has the best service in uh, furniture, have it all failed uh, while they shop at ruparupa.com. So this is the formula that we have crafted. Uh, we know that the winning formula for ruparupa.com omnichannel is to leverage the current store network, meaning we use our stores at DC. I think we are actually one of the first, uh, or, or not, the only uh, company or group of companies that uh, uses our stores as a DC because... Um, we have a near real-time stock availability. So actually, if you go uh, to ruparupa.com and purchase something and then have it, uh, we will look into uh, the nearest store and send it to, our, uh, to the customer. So with that, the customer will enjoy a lower cost in shipping and also the same level of customer service. We also try to do the same customer experience online and offline. As I mentioned before, I think customer experience is very important because we have a reputation to uphold. And uh, so how we do a same return and refund policy. And then there's a seamless experience in online purchase and store pickup, uh, meaning that, okay, uh, it is easy for them to just uh, click uh, to have it, oh yeah, I want to pick up the same goods in Surabaya at no extra shipping costs uh, within four hours. Um, and then you can do that easily. And then uh, not only products that's coming from one store, but also any, uh, any products that's coming from different uh, brands. Uh, we have the same pricing as you can find in a store and the same exact offers and privileges. Uh, other than online deals, of course. And then it's about bringing the brand essence and promise uh, a life online. So, uh, yeah. so these are the formula that we have crafted. And so uh, hopefully uh, these tips will help you build an omni-channel that is right for your company. It's for uh, depending on your culture, your company culture the products that you sell, and the pricing strategy uh, that you want to do. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there's no perfect formula for this, but there's only a perfect formula only for things that you can execute. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any question for Teresa Wibowo, Chief of Many Things from ruparupa.com? Any question? I, my question is, um, do, you, do you measure the impact, um, like you, you just recently went uh, online, so do you measure the impact that a store is having on online sales or is online having on offline or uh, is that something that you think about, is that? Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the question is how much uh, it or, impacts. Yeah, or do you measure it or do you think about it or? Yeah. You know, is, it on, is an offline store affecting your online sales or to what extent is it affecting? And, and like you mentioned, you know, you have to think about your KPIs and how it, you know, so maybe an offline store is leading to an online purchase, but that is leading to a drop in sales of, um, of a store. So, I mean, do you, is this something that you measure? 
so uh, fortunately for us, I think um, this is also the same numbers that you see uh, surveyed. Customers who shop omnichannel actually spends more in your store. Yeah, uh, and this is also true at RupaRupa.com because we uh, we do keep track of people who are, let's say, they are ACE members. They can uh, connect to RupaRupa.com using their ACE membership, and then from there we will know. Oh, this ACE member actually shops Informa products as well, or Toys Kingdom products, or any other things, and then we track back to where. Um, what they sh what they shop online, how much they shop uh, sorry what they shop offline, and actually there 's no cannibalization at all um, fortunately for us, <laughs> but um, whether or not they actually enjoyed uh, discounts they, when they're actually compare, uh, when they 're shopping comparing offline and online, uh, since we try to do the same pricing all the time. So uh, it's a matter of convenience that we actually offer to our customers. So when they, they read newspaper that, oh yeah, 10% off all ACE products today, they can have the choice of going offline or online, and then they can enjoy the same price. Uh, in RupaRupa.com, we actually have a weekly flash sale, but those are only certain products, uh, and those, um, those promotions actually brings in more traffic rather than um, getting in customer complaints offline saying that why don't I get the same offers on uh, as the same online yeah so I think uh, for us um, it is uh, it is uh, beneficial to have the same pricing strategy but uh, I couldn't say the same as in uh, any other brands yeah thank you Hi, Teresa. My name is Grant. I'm from Hero Supermarket. Okay. Uh, I would like to know about uh, the things to consider, the company's willingness to invest. Uh, is RupaRupa.com is a top-down initiative from the management, or is it uh, from the bottom up that the, you, you gave the insight for the management to go online? So it's the online initiative from the man top management or from you. Uh, how how do you how how many how big is the investment of the company? I mean, uh, the the willingness to invest from your management. So how many tears and blood that you need to shed for making this uh, uh, go online? Thank you. Okay, uh, that's I think. Um the most asked question <laughs> whenever a retailer want to go online. Um, so the idea actually do comes from top management because uh, I think maybe it's in everybody's eyes. Uh, they foresee that, okay, we have to go online, we have to go online, but nobody is actually making actions to do it or doesn't know how to do it. So um, it takes a sponsor from the top management to actually create this initiative. Um, okay, let's go online. Let's create uh, a new, carve out a new uh, management uh, that handles especially for RupaRupa.com. So it's separate from Informa, from Ace, from Toys Kingdom. So they can have their own uh, autonomy. They can have their own ideas. They can have their own say in what uh, this RupaRupa.com is going to be. Uh, so that's why it's being separated. But it comes from a top down and it needs to have a project sponsor uh, from the top management. As for how much investment that we make, it's a lot. <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, this is, we've, we, have, we haven't been operating for a year yet, uh, but uh, before that, of course, comes the business plan and everything. But, uh, but I think, luckily, fortunately, with the management is that uh, they they know that it's a it's a it's a future. So it's like an investment. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we know that we are not going to be. Uh, the same as any other e-commerce like uh, marketplaces or any other e-commerce that comes from 
uh, uh, foreign foreign countries, foreign investments, I guess, uh, from VCs, where they have a unlimited apa, uang yang berseri gitu ya, investmentnya, so they can go red until I don't know how many years. But us coming back, coming from a retailer, uh, we want to see green right away <laughs> because uh, we already have something in mind. Like, okay, if I open one store, how many years it will get back? So we are being uh, faced with the same kind of uh, measurements, but of course, it's slightly looser uh, because of the nature of the business itself. Yeah. Just one oh, last question just... for Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Hi. I have a very simple question. In the long run, are you going to reduce the number of retail stores? Uh, sorry, I cannot. I cannot hear. I have a question. Um, in the long run, are you going to reduce the number of your retail stores? And how do you measure how long you're going to plan your investment so that you can uh, switch from the brick and mortar business to everyone buying online? Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a very another very good question. Um, we are not planning to reduce any of our store openings actually, because uh, if you see um, from the chart earlier, most of us are still omnichannel shopper. So the presence of brick and mortar store is actually crucial to the success of our omnichannel. So uh, we are not going to reduce the number of stores that is open. Actually, the more stores it open, the more the better it is for us because then we can use these stores as a DC, as a pickup point, as a customer facing um, uh, customer uh, facing point. Uh, so that is something that the online only e-commerce cannot crack. So I think um, it, is, uh, it is not advisable for retailers to, just because you have an online presence, you start not opening stores. But you can use it as a test case, uh, for example, rather than opening or investing right away in a area that is, uh, in an area that you don't know whether or not your physical store might succeed, you can just open a pop-up store, and then you can use the same system as your uh, online arm to supply to that pop-up store and then see how it works. So I think that's also one thing to go around. Uh, so you can kind of um, pinpoint where your next store opening is going to be. I think the data that you get, who are your customers online, can also determine where your next uh, store opening is going to be. Thank you very much. Um, I know there are more questions. Probably you can meet Teresa during the next afternoon coffee break for your questions. Now uh, we thank Teresa Wibowo, Chief of Many Things from RupaRupa.com. Okay, thank you very much.